for coming on. Um, yeah, becoming a familiar face. So tonight we are going to be talking about Daniel, the guy that escaped from Wandsworth. Um, he was in for terrorism, I do believe. I mean, it's neither here nor there what he was in for anyway. It's kind of irrelevant, the fact that the guys escaped from prison. And the reason that we are on here today is because me and Roxy both pretty much met because she moved down to the um, privilege wing after being on um, J wing. And basically you started doing your roles and we was both working outside the prison at the same time. So obviously, it's quite good to have someone else's like theory on it and see if you have the same opinion as me. Um, and let's put it this way. In my head, there's only two theories that anyone is breaking free from a prison because it ain't over no prison gate. That's for sure. Or no fence. So for me, my opinion straight away is either he's had someone paid on the inside um, to help him or there's going to be a guard that is going to be getting sacked, a gate guard, um, basically for not doing their job properly. So literally, what are your views on that, Roxy? Well, I've been, I found out yesterday. So I've had since yesterday and today to go through every single th thing I could think of. But my point is, underneath the truck, there were straps found. So he strapped himself to the bottom of this truck. So someone had to be involved to A, get them strapped to the bottom of the truck, B, be able to get to the bottom of the truck and strap yourself. And it was a food fan bringing in food. So we all know from working, going to the kitchens, getting the stuff. There's always a guard with the truck. So how have you managed to walk out of the kitchens without the manager seeing, the chef knowing, and the guard get underneath this truck, strap yourself to this truck, and get out of the prison. Well, do you know what? I don't think anything's impossible. And in prison, the sounding's a bit poor. Can you hear me all right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah cool. So um, in prison, I think you can get hold of anything. I think you could get hold of that kind of stuff from the gym. I don't think it's that kind, that hard to possibly be able to get under to get stuff and i don't think if you're smart enough and he is light enough he i reckon he i reckon that i reckon that bit he could could have possibly done alone like you're right but i do think there is a small chance he could have done that on his own so let's pretend he's very very intelligent and he's done that um the point is is do you remember when we used to wait outside now any vehicle whether it was a taxi a prison van whatever the we so we would have to, so you've got two gates yeah so you've got the front gate that you're free you're out of and then in between that you've got like a closed bit where the van stops and there's another gate yeah and then that van has even if it's coming into the prison it has to stop in between them two gates now if the if the car got went in just as we were walking back to go in you know from the the working out the front bit that we would have to wait outside the gates we couldn't still walk through they would have like a trolley jack with a big round huge mirror on it and they would literally go underneath every angle and every end of the vehicle so my theory is either that guard on that on that gate was being damn right lazy and just didn't care or someone was being paid because you gotta remember, one's i've been to one you're far away so i've been to one was worth to visit yeah and yeah. unlike our jail, when, when they look under the van, it's open. Wandsworth is closed in. So there's no, he can't try and say the sun was in the way because they're closed in. It's literally a closed in building when they're going through the doors. Hmm. So, all right, people need to stop requesting to join the live because you're not joining. <laughs> so my point is, someone had to be involved. A. The truck driver got found at 8.30. This guy got out of the prison at 7.30. So yeah, you had so an hour. Huh? Men's jails might be different, but you're not even unlocked at 7.30. So men's could be different. Obviously, yeah, but I've he never was in the kitchens. One. He was kitchen staff. So when when have you ever known kitchen staff to work at 7.30? But there, again, I'm talking from a woman's jail. I've never worked in a man's. Yeah. I've never worked. So, Don't be from what I know, from my ma my mate that's in a mouse one, they get unlocked early to set up breakfast. Okay, fair enough. 
because they get fed hot breakfast. Right. From, from what I've realised, I don't know if every man's jowls like that. Maybe someone in the comments can help. But from what I know from where my mate is, they get a hot breakfast. So their kitchen staff go to work from like 7, 7.30 in the morning. So this truck has been found at 8.30 near Richmond. And the guy wasn't underneath the truck. And this guy is an ex-military person. Well, that's what I'm saying. He could have, he could have, he could have got under there quite easily on his own and strapped himself. Like, I think, you know, I think, I think he's done that alone. I think he's done that alone. To be fair. Yeah, I mean, I have got someone in the comments saying, "No, nah, my man's prison kitchen staff unlocked at A. So I think the thing is, is there's a lot of jails, there's a lot of men's prisons, and we just don't know we don't know factual and again women's prisons are run so different to men so we can't really sort of speculate on the time we're just you know at the end of the day that that the uh on the news i've been watching they basically were saying that the um the 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 prison are blaming it on the government because they've stopped so many millions of funding and they've got no staff they're understaffed there's more prisons and staff but again that's got nothing to do with your um, staff on the gate because you have to have X man of staff on the gate yeah and again I don't know how men's prisons are but the women's prisons they weren't officers they were they had no stripes you know like how an officer you got a standard the one they got one staff. stripe yeah the gate they, staff they never, yeah they they never work in the prison they they've not they've not got that far to be able to work in the prison so if the, if the man's prison is run like a female establishment it wouldn't have even been the prison staff so you can't tell me if you've got no staff no no nobody would be coming in and out of the prison it's as simple as that well, so we know, well we know what's from reported the guy the truck left the prison at seven thirty. so that's when he must have left because he must have just because the truck left the prison at seven thirty a.m and the truck was stopped at 8.30 a.m. and he wasn't on the truck. So we know he must have been not in his cell overnight. He must have been let out in the morning to start work with the kitchen staff because he was gone from morning. He was locked in at night. Yeah. So he had to have gone from this that morning. What gets me is the guy still out here. Well, he's a smart man. He's escaped from prison, you know. How how often do you hear of someone escaping from prison? Well, in America, probably has been reported someone from Pennsylvania has got out too. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, but in England, when was the last time you heard of someone escaping from prison? You know, at the end of the day, like... That's, I've heard that's... of people... Like, I know someone that got let out by accident under the wrong identity. Yeah, but again, that's not them escaping, is it? Yeah, and but it, people that are scone, people that are scone and don't come back from rottles, they're already let out the gate. They're working outside, so they're already they're already free. They're already through that gate. So you know, from my experience of working and coming in and out, and I've seen it, I've watched it. It's not like I've heard a story. They yeah. check every angle with with a mirror. So, like I said, there was either some lazy ass guard on that day or the guard was getting paid as well. Listen, the guy's clearly intelligent. He knows for a fact he hasn't got long to get off that truck. He hasn't got long at all. Like, he's gone. He, this has already been pre planned. Like, well, you gotta look at it. A, he's worked in the army, so he knows every trick underneath the book. B, let's just say it. He's a convicted terrorist. We all know these terrorists lock up with each other and they're smart. So it's a planned getaway. Yeah, no, of course. That's what I'm saying. He's not just done that spontaneously. Ah. He's got a, anyone that escapes will have a plan. They won't just go and go, I'm going to go with no money. I'm going to go with no one helping me. I'm not going to go with no passport, dodgy passport to get me out of the country quick. I'll, no, no, no one's just going to, no one's just going to just randomly on the spontaneously go, you know what? I'm uh, magically find some straps strap myself to the bottom of the truck and hope for the best <laughs> like that's not how it's gonna it's not gonna work like that i just feel like someone or so many people were paid to be along with this i don't feel like this is a one-man job there's no way he could have got out of that prison underneath the fan strapped himself like everything must have been planned regardless if it was other prisoners 
oh, prisoner staff. This was well planned. Yes. And let's be real, oh, the guy's been missing for over 24 hours. I don't reckon any, I don't, uh, again, this is just my opinion. We can all speculate. I don't reckon there was any other prisoners involved because that's too much of a big thing. And we all know what it's like in prison. It doesn't take le long to learn. You can't trust anyone. Like one, you do that, you say that to anyone, even someone you think's your friend, you know how much they turn on you and they'll be so jealous and hating. The only people that would have been in on that would have been him, the driver and a guard. Now, if he's got people out there that have got dough, man, they'd be paid big money for that. And that's, that's all been pre-planned for a while. Well, the truck driver's um, been arrested and he's been interviewed, but... To be fair, I feel like the straps were already on. I feel like they must have already been on that truck when they came in. To keep him that high up and that secure, it had to be. Like I said, the guy's a light. Like the guy looks like a little, like skinny guy. Like he doesn't look like there's a lot of weight to him. I just don't think it would have been impossible to cook up yourself. I'm sure he's six foot. You know. Oh, is he tall? He looks skinny, though. Like, he, he looks like he I doesn't have a lot of weight to him. I think he's in his early 20s and he's six foot tall. He's six foot uh, tall. I only see a picture of his face, so I'm just going by that. But, if, again, if he's strong, listen, people, <laughs> for your freedom, if you're looking at a long sentence, you'll be holding on to the 10 bars for dear life. You don't need to be strapped. <laughs> you don't need to be strapped up. I mean, I just think, fucking hell, like, what a thing to do. Someone saying he's six foot two. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. That was a big old truck anyway, wasn't it? <laughs> I think it's so funny. I literally was on the way home yesterday from filming and it hit the radio. And I was like, oh? I was like, no way. And the first thing came to my mind was prison break, watching it in prison, thinking like, <laughs> how did he do this? Thinking of all the ways you could have got out yourself. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, the, the thing is, is like I said, for to get under the van in send that never would have happened they would have seen him under that van they do not mess around that's one thing on their security and the same as bronzefield that wouldn't have happened like it just wouldn't have happened but i can't say how the system works in bronzefield i just know that you go up the drive through the gate and then obviously it's the whole same thing you're shut off in a gap you've got to get checked through coming in and out the prison they do the, they do the same thing so you know, if that there's got to be, there's like I said, two things. Either he's the guard was lazy as hell, and they're giving it the whole "are oh, we were too understaffed to check the van properly," or he was paid. There's no other but way geez, about it. I visited Wandsworth yet, yeah, and to be fair, I visited Send, and my hair wasn't checked once by staff. When I went and visited Scrubs, where these guys come out from. They made me undo the whole of my hair and take off my shoes and put them through a scanner. I was going to say, Roxy, look at what the girls used to get up to, man. Just <laughs> coming no, in no. in the vans and stuff. <laughs> no, but I'm thinking, imagine, that's how I got in there to visit. They checked my hair, scanned my shoes, everything. So I have, what, the guy, to get out. Now, I haven't been in Wandsworth through a truck because I haven't been a prisoner in Wandsworth. Any guys on here, please tell us. But I'm yeah. sure you're stopped in the middle of the two gates. Yeah, but any, yeah that's what I'm saying. Any, ve any vehicle is in any prison. You know, like when you go into, like, Bronzefield, you go into whatever prison, when you're in the prison van, you stop. As soon as you go into the main gate from the front, the vehicle is stopped. It doesn't matter what vehicle's going in. It's checked all underneath because anyone could have been under that van. There could have been someone under there holding, you know... They could, be, they could be doing anything to come and go nuts in the prison. So it's not just about coming out. It's about the security going in as well. So, yeah, so I definitely feel like someone, I definitely feel like the guard was involved. If not, the guard, I don't know, it could have been blind in one eye. <laughs> he was involved. Because that's what I'm saying. They're equipped for big vehicles coming in. They come in and out all the time, in and out all the time, like literally. So there's no, there's no way that, you know, they, yeah. 
I mean, obviously that guard's going to be under the huge, like the biggest interrogation now for it by the police anyway, because they got some answering to do. Well, MI5's probably got him at the moment. <laughs> I said MI5's probably got him at the moment. It's terrorism. Yeah, well, it's huge. Well, the crime he hasn't committed now is not terrorism. I mean, it's an escapee, you know what I mean? But obviously, they take what is crime, so it'd be to an extra level uh, what they would do probably if someone well, was selling them. Yeah, on a, this isn't a guy that's on the run that's gone and sold coke or is a gun dealer. <laughs> it's the most, like, highest crime you commit in the UK. Like, they want this guy. No, He's know, probably like halfway across the country right now, now anyway. Hmm? I said he's probably halfway across the country by now, like halfway oh. travelling around the world. Yeah, he's on a boat somewhere, just still trying to get her from off the UK. <laughs> a little speedboat. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but all jokes aside, like, it's mad. It's, it's... When I see it, I'm not even going to lie to you, I see it on, like, because I follow, like, the Sky... Um, news and that now on TikTok after that Lucy thing I'll, 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 I'll follow it on there and it come up and I thought it was a joke you know when you see them joke videos sometimes and they change the, the talking of them people's mouths and stuff I had to look and see that it had um, the blue verified tick and it did yeah I don't know how no one spotted him that's what I'm saying this is well well planned um, this guy has gone underground the second that he's got off that truck oh, you got um, a few there's no videos of him on the street since the day he left that prison. Yeah. There's, no, I mean. there's no CCTV footage, nothing. So this guy, so my point is, I think this guy has come out of the jail, let the truck go around the corner and jumped in someone's boot and off he goes. Yeah, he's, he, know, he knew he had to get off there quick anyway. He knew that. He knew it wouldn't take long. But then how, how come they found out so, I guess... I guess if they done roll check, they do roll check, don't they? In uh, about what time? I don't even know. I can't remember. It's been so long. But they do roll check in the morning, don't they? So possibly it could have just been then. I guess half eight, maybe that they did roll check, and that's oh, what I mean. It's a bit different. Did the prisoner see him go and notify them. We don't know because you got to think. It got reported at 7.30 and the guy got found, and the truck got found at 8.30. That truck left the jail at 7.30. So an hour so, later, the truck was found in Richmond. Yeah, he wouldn't, um, someone's saying about phone calls or recording, he would have had a mobile. Uh, loads of people have mobiles in prison. There's no way anything would have been on the phone. Like so how I'm confused now. So he left the prison at 7.30 or they found, they found... So he left the prison at 7.30, and what time did the prison know he was missing? So from what they know, it got said the guy was missing at 7.30, so they obviously assume that's what tried the truck left, because it said what left, it said gone missing at 7.30 a.m., and the truck was found in Richmond at 8.30. But found, I just thought he just got spotted, and there was like, it wasn't like found, it wasn't like abandoned or anything like that. Well, no, the guy also got stopped at 8.30, got pulled over and questioned yeah. the car, but... So they said this truck was found, or pulled... They obviously followed the trucks on the CCTV or whatever, and at 8.30, he'd been pulled over, and the guy wasn't on the bottom of the truck. So they were checking Richmond Park, apparently, this morning. <laughs> Mate, he's gone underground. This guy... Anyone that has got the balls to... It's not even ballsy, really, is it, to escape from prison? But anyone that's smart, um, smart enough to, to to be able to get away with that, I mean, I think we can all speculate, but I think that he's had someone help him, and he's got people obviously on the outside, and his thing was gone already. Um, someone's comment in news says he was seen walking towards Wandsworth Town. So yeah, he probably he probably did because listen, he probably just hopped off there. Um, but they must have seen it on the camera. So that's why the truck must have some... So listen, a lot of places have CCTV. So he's either flung himself off while they're driving down the road or the truck stopped somewhere down the road where there's no cameras. Let him jump what, off. What I'm thinking, yeah, 
his trucks yeah. obviously been followed once he's left Wandsworth Scrubs. Um, driving along, they've obviously followed the tracking, and then the last known situation was obviously Richmond, where he got pulled over. So between then and now, the truck could have pulled over anywhere, or the guys rolled out. But I doubt he was walking to the town. Do you know what I mean? He was probably picked up straight away and put in the back of the lorry. Because otherwise, where would where would he have gone from the town? He, but that's where he could have just gone in. He, he had time. He had time, really. I mean, that's what I'm saying. So he could have got picked up anywhere. As soon as he walks off a road where there's no CCTV, that's it. No one's going to see a car pick him up. That's why I think it was pre-planned, because... He's only got to walk through the town like nothing's happened. He pops down the road, no cameras, gets picked up. That's it, never to be seen again. He could have gone anyway from down the road, you know? I definitely feel like he was hiding in the boot. Because, come on now, every, how many people have a ring doorbell? No one's noticed nothing. Yeah, but that's... If he's in a car, how's anyone going to notice from a ring doorbell? Well, I'm saying if he was walking down a random road, so he must have gone straight off and got straight into a car. Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. Again, you wouldn't expect a prison without a plan. You've got the only people that do that kind of stuff that are out on their rules, that end up taking drugs, that have got habits that, you know, that are drug addicts, get on their rules, and they end up going on a bender and don't come back. Like, he, this guy's planned this. This guy's. He's smart. He's had it all planned. You don't escape from prison. You don't go to that extreme to get off the van and have no plan. What's the point? I mean, all right, maybe. Maybe he's that crazy. Maybe he's like, you know what, fuck it. And he's in a bush somewhere. But what's the point? And I was like, I was I was talking, because obviously I was talking to the staff I was working with today. And I was like, this has got to be a very, very, very sick plan because the day it happened, they went and checked Ethro Airport. So the trains were affected that morning and Ethro Airport was all delayed because they were checking people's passports and stuff. It's very hard to copy a passport these days. So this has been very organised. So he yeah, must have paid with money, gone by people, the boat. Listen, people with money can get anything, anything. That's the thing. You don't know. You don't know if he's wealthy, if he's got wealthy friends. You don't know what the plan is. You've got like no idea. Like, you know, we can sit and speculate as much as we want, but we've all got, none of us have got no idea. Like, the thing is, is this guy knows, yeah, that it's huge. So he knows that when he comes out, he's got to have a plan. You can guarantee, you know, what are the girls like when something happens? They're bang, 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 bang on the stove. You know, every time it comes on the news, I guarantee the whole jail is just like, bang, bang, or is screaming and I going nuts. I bet friends are fucking fuming. <laughs> yeah, all on lockdown now. No, there'll be some of them that I like, that'll be like going nuts, like, go on, boy. But there'll be some that'll just be pissed if they're on 24-hour lockdown now because of it. They'll be fuming. In this but, heat, in themselves. Oh, my God, do you remember it? And some of them are free man bang-ups. Mate. Do you know what, when it's got hot the last the other week, so like a couple of weeks back, I remember sitting there thinking of just sitting in my cell now, just like hot rocks. You yeah. just don't <laughs> move and you're dripping in places you didn't even think were possible. And literally, like I remember going down, getting in the shower, getting in the shower in my clothes, and then just going outside. And I was like, "What are you doing?" I was like, "Try it." And you would, yeah. You, at one point, you'd be a little bit chilly. It's like thirty degrees, but. It was the best, yeah, imagine that. So, Someone say I remember the hot summers being locked up at quarter past five in J-Wing with vents. Vents! <laughs> yeah. yeah. And even that's... moving to go to the toilet, you're dying. I know, it's horrific. It is so, horrific. like, can you imagine right now being in a cell free man up? Yeah, I mean, somebody saying that um, they think it's been lifted, apparently, and it wouldn't surprise me, because I think in this heat... It's too much. Like it's, yeah. Listen, you gotta think. Yeah, I know people. I know people right now that are on twenty three, twenty two lock up in normal jails, and that's their net standard day because of shortage yeah. of staff. So I doubt. I doubt if these guys are even. I doubt if they're even unlocked as normal. I'd be. I wouldn't be surprised if they're unlocked for only like an hour. 
Don't you think it's like in the in the bigger populations like bronze food was locked down a lot more compared to send like the smaller girl, the amount of girls like the more the more unlocked you was. Yeah, like my mate now he's still on COVID regime. How long has COVID been left jail? They're still on it. That's he bad. said. So, so I remember my um my brother was only in jail not so long ago in High Point. There was days that they weren't even allowed out. They'd be locked down for a whole day for no reason. Yeah. Not even allowed out for a shower that day. Just stuck in their room, 24 hours. So, so what do you reckon then? What do you reckon? What's your theory? You reckon they're going to find them anytime soon? Hell no, this man's already on the boat halfway across the ocean right now. That's what I'm saying. He's gone. I, they, I don't, yeah. Again, I don't know the guy. I know nothing about the story. And I've said it already probably about 10 times now. We can all speculate. But I just think this had to be pre-planned. And... Obviously, like, I mean, as in, like, he's had people on the outside. It's not just a random, I'm going to try this and hope for the best. Like, you know this is going to be huge. You know you're going to be all over the news, especially with the crime that you've done. So you've got to be, you've got to have that getaway straight away. But, yeah. Leo. Fa Leo. Used to revolt in. Yeah, but it's facts, mate. Either an officer was paid, or yeah, they're getting sacked. They can't. No, there's no, there's no other explanation for it. The vans are get, the vans get surged. That's why I just wanted to jump on and explain how hard it is to be able, because that's what they know. That was the oldest trick in the book. Back down, back like back in the day, everyone used to strap themselves to the bottom of the vehicle. They never used to check them. So like they literally, that's why they're so on it. That's why, like I said, even coming into the prison, they do it. It's not just out. He hasn't even been charged yet. So yeah. Yeah, no, like, people are saying, someone's saying they don't think they'll find him and he hasn't been charged yet, so, well. He hasn't, he I thought he was a convicted terrorist. I don't know, I, I, um, with that I know he was in there for terrorism charges, that's all I um, listened to. My, what I listened to the like was just short video clips of it, so I didn't really research on it too much because it was more for me, this was about saying how how hard it is to just you don't just strap yourself to the bottom of the van and they don't search they don't look because they do they do badly um i just think there's a number of things why this guy has done, done it so well a he's an ex arm he used to work with the art he used to be in the army and if he's not convicted and this is what he's convicted of then he obviously has very high powers in certain places so it's money, it's money. Look how good. look at them all corrupt in, corrupt in, uh, in in prisons anyway. Look at that old dude that used to work on the gate. I don't know if he was out there. I think it might have been with me, Lucy and Ron. He was like, yeah, I'll bring you a drink out for Christmas, girls. Do you know what I mean? And he and he was just trying to be nice, but mate, you get fucked for that. Like, and you think what people are doing for money? <laughs> he was just doing it because he was a bit pervy. Can you imagine what his bloody what is what he would do for money so people could people go nuts they think they're untouchable they get away with it but they're delusional i definitely think whatever this guy is involved with he's involved with an obviously very educated gang that's obviously managed to get him this far so he obviously had money he used to work in the army he's got connects yeah, if people want it, mate, people got money. Yeah, money does speak volumes, and yeah, literally, like money talks. So, yeah, he's gone, he's done. Hasta la vista. But we can uh, go round and round and round in circles on this one. I think we can speculate loads on it. But I just wanted to say facts, man, from seeing it firsthand, not just hearing it, of seeing how the vans come in. Yeah, it is as well. That's it. You've only got to listen. These officers, the thing is, right, first-hand experience, yeah, they get, some of them get well clingy. They get way too pally. Yeah, they don't know definitely how to stay professional. It. And then literally, some of them are even beggars, yeah? And some of them are professional. Some of them won't even give you the time of day. But 
and they get manipulated. They get manipulated. They wanna. I mean, they, they wanna earn respect. Look how many girls were in jail. Were ex ex prison officers that got off yeah. with others. Yeah, they're easy. Um, People the thing is, staff are normal people. And yeah, and also the thing is as well is like what they don't. Um, there was no way of me escaping from Bronzefield. That's what I'm saying. And the thing is, as well, is he this the, the gate guard, yeah, or whoever it was. Let's just say he was on duty that day. For all you know, he could have done a little thing for this guy because that's what they do. This is what prisoners do. They'll get you to do something, and you don't even realise, but you're breaking the rules. And then it's like, oh, bring me in a can of Coke. That's breaking the rules straight away, yeah? Let's just pretend there's something, they want food or something, and the officer brings it in because they've got all pally and they're kissing ass. And then the next thing, it's something else. And then, bang, that's it. Once they've got you, once that once like that prisoner's got you, you're stuck then. Now, you've got to do what that prisoner says, or they're going to grass you up. So then you've got, you're doing anything they say, and then you're getting paid for it as well. So I mean, it could be. Come on, let's be real. We was in said. Was it two officers got off with the prisoners and and got sacked from their job and was bringing shit in? Like officers do. Yeah, all so, the time, wouldn't it? I mean, you wasn't in there in lockdown, but in lockdown we was having no visits. No girls was on roll, so no one was bringing it in. Yeah, everyone was in lockdown, so they weren't throwing it over the fucking over the fence. So where there was drugs. There was drugs. There was people on ENF talking about getting it from main block and it being passed through down the kitchens to the dinner. But how? How is that? How? How? How, how is there drugs in prison in lockdown because they run out because girls take them even more so because it's, it's the sentence has become 10 times harder. This so way, I know someone that used to ring me spiced off their nuts every day. Like, it was me, and I was saying to her, bruv, like, it's, all these officers are bringing shit in, and then they're locking you in a safe cell. Why, when it's them bringing it in? No. I so, know, you it's know mad, what? I'm not it's surprised. Mad. I'm not There's surprised. so many stories you could tell, so many stories, so but that's many. another, that's another video. Um, yeah, we'll wrap it up there on this one then, because I think we'll just end up going around in a circle. So, yeah, simple, man. He's either paid someone or some dumb, dumb, dumb officer was on, and it was just lucky that he got away with it. There's no other way. Like, there's no other... Obviously, there's not really any excuse, uh, explanation, but it's not... What I'm trying to say to you guys that are watching it, yeah, is that... Um, oh, let her know I'm going to jump on in a minute, if you could, please. I'm going to jump on with her in a minute. Um... What I'm trying to say is that you can't just jump under a van and you can just get out because this doesn't work like that. It's the oldest trick in the book. It's, you know, and that's why they have the mirror things. Like I said already quite a few times, we've seen it firsthand. That's how it works. Um, so, yeah, bit of corruption going on there, guys. But thank you, Roxy, for jumping on anyway. And I will speak to you soon. Bye. Okay, hey Emily. Hi. Thank you for coming on again. <laughs> you and Roxy are coming from uh, regular faces now. Um, yeah, I just wanted to get your intake really on the whole um, Daniel escaping from prison. Um, so obviously I've just been speaking to Roxy about it and basically like for me there's only two theories. I mean I know people are probably going oh yeah well that's obvious but the thing is is when I went out of my rolls whether a vehicle was coming in or out of the prison, they'd have the, um, it looks like a trolley jack, and they'd have the, the mirror, and they'd go around the whole vehicle, and we wasn't allowed to go in the back in the prison from a rottle if there was a vehicle in the process in between them two gates. So my theory basically is that he's either paid an officer, obviously, to do it, or there's a dumbass officer that's about to get sacked for being dumb and not checking the vehicle properly. What was the security like? Because obviously, um, Bronzefield is obviously high class security. So, do you ever recall seeing anything like that when you was on your rolls? Yeah, again, I was not allowed because I left through the main gate um, every day. I was not allowed in the vehicle holding part if there was a vehicle in there. I had to wait outside yeah. until whatever vehicle van or anything left or come into the prison i was not allowed to enter um and then um but i know from obviously being on the prison vans even when a van like when they're dropping off prisoners they i've watched them out the window go around with the mirror so 
for me, the only way that could be happened if someone was working in the in the prison. Someone had to have been working on the front gate. There's no, there's no other way. Someone had to be working, like working with him. Yeah, because obviously this is not just a random plan and thought, oh, I'll take my chances because, you know, the reason they do the mirror under the vehicles is because that's how they used to get away back in the day. They used to hide underneath the bottoms of the vehicles. Um, but obviously, you know, they cottoned onto it. And hence the reason of the mirrors of the vans. I mean, send you could send you this like a, you could see through the gate, so you would see them go under every angle of the vehicle um, with the mirror. You know, they would be so thorough with it, and they'd be there for ages as well, ages. Um, sorry, Sabrina said, "Do you think they will find him?" Um, I like to hope they will, but then at the same time, if he is a terrorist then he he probably has a big network of people around him do you know what i mean but then obviously intelligence and stuff like that i feel i hope so i hope so but yeah i don't know, I just don't know. that's what i'm saying i don't believe this was just some small little potluck he's tied himself to the bottom of it he's strapped himself and he's got out this is definitely like a big planned job you you know and, and he's the for something like this people have got money people have got money to pay you know how easily the officers get corrupted and stuff like that it's so easy um you know money their, their morals change you know they think you think these people that are supposed to be there and uh, uh, you know and un we're under their care a lot of you know a lot of them are more corrupt than what we are I'm not being funny. If you're strapping yourself to the underneath of a vehicle, it's not a thing where you can quickly dive under it and be like, okay, go. Do you know what I mean? It's gonna be you're gonna have to get yourself into into a position to feel like so that you're not gonna fall off. Do you know what I mean? Like and then obviously you you don't you can't just drive in and out of prisons. It's it's takes time even when you're going into the gate and then you have to give your details to the person on the gate and it's not he would have had to have been under that vehicle probably for a good five ten minutes before it even made it out of the gate Easy. Yeah. you know it really depends if there was an officer free to check it straight away you know was it because they're if i don't know if you've seen on the news there they're saying that basically because the government have stopped so much funding it's you know it's doubt it's kind of like their fault they're short staffed there's more prisoners and staff or was it because they were so understaffed that one officer was just dumb and thought you know what i'm going to let this one slide and it was potluck what i'd like to add as well is that they said he had kitchen uniform on he was working in the kitchens someone of that high profile would not have been able to get a job in the kitchen so how was he even working in the kitchens you you yeah. you, you can't get a he would he would not have been able to get a job in the okay. kitchens like you wouldn't What's it now? And, and how long how long had he been how i don't know but how long had he been in prison for yeah i don't actually know that one so, obviously that that would be something that would the only way he would get clearance for that is because obviously they're banded, different job roles are banded. So yeah. that would be a, a working in the kitchen would be a red banded job. There's no way he's going to have access to knives and all those kind of things as a terrorist. It, like he should never have even been in the kitchen. Yeah, so, I mean, we don't know fact well. that. I mean, as they're saying he was working in the kitchens. I'm not sure how factual it was. They were just saying he was. In, was he just saying that he was in a kitchen? I mean, it's easy to it's easy to take that uniform back. It's easy to do a lot of things. That, you know, especially when the officers you get on well, you don't say anything. Or oh, I'm taking it back to the wing to wash. They're just black stuff. Mm. Like you know, so you just don't you don't know if someone brought him back the uniform. Nobody knows. But I mean, this was apparently Roxy was saying it was like half seven in the morning. The van left. Um, so if that is the case, he must have been at work. So he must have been working in the kitchens. Yeah, because he, he, he wouldn't have been out of his cell that early otherwise. No. So that's um, strange as well. So yeah, no, I just wanted to catch your your theory on it quickly, and you know, and what you you know what it was like from Bronzeville because it's just not that easy. It's not that clean cut. Um, not now. I'm not in a high security prison, and Wandsworth 
I'm sure Wandsworth is classed as a high security prison. Like it, it is it's a it's a rough jail. So, yeah, see, someone's just commented. No one works seven thirty in the kitchens. People don't get unlocked till seven thirty. I mean, so from a women's perspective, no one got unlocked at seven thirty. There was no job, um, unless you're going to court, that you've got a reason to come out of your cell. You know, they literally. But I don't know what men's prisons are like. I've, you know, obviously I've never been in one, so I don't know if they do have early unlock for kitchen staff because apparently they got to prep all the food. They have cooked breakfast, whereas we didn't. We just got toast, um, especially in Bronzefield. I mean, it was a bit different in Send, but. You didn't go down. You never went down to the dining hall for breakfast. You only went down for lunch and dinner. So I don't know. I don't know what men's prisons are like. All I know is that there, you know, there's only two ways around it. It just, there's just no way it was potluck that he thought I'm going to chance this, because it's too much high security. If the band's being checked under, then I reckon I'd go more with someone who was paid. I'm pretty sure it'll come out to light anyway. I'm not sure Anne he can to escape Bromsfield. Uh, yes, she did. Um, they said that she used to cut off someone's finger, didn't they? Who's that? No one. I mean, yeah, that, that, that's, again, you don't know how true that was. That's just an old myth that everyone hears when you go into Bromsfield that she was going to, yeah, chop someone's finger off. But I've never, I've never heard the story from the horse's mouth. Um, you don't know if it was an officer or someone doing it just to get money from the papers. They bought the story, or well, maybe it was true. Who knows? <laughs> Jay said, "How did the straps even get on without anyone noticing?" This is what I'm saying, Jay. Like, how is that even? If that's not a quick thing, that's not yeah. that's not going to be a quick process. I think in Bronzefield, you definitely, you know, somewhere so such high security, you couldn't walk around with straps and stuff. But I feel like send, like, it just wouldn't surprise me. You walk around on your own. Like, you could, if you've been, if you found something in the gym or something, I just don't think it would have been that hard it, to get something and take it back to your room. It just wouldn't surprise me. But in that kind of prison, you would think that it wouldn't be that simple to get something. Phoenix said, I wish I could find him and collect the reward. <laughs> Yeah, definitely, Danielle. I think it's definitely pre well, obviously, been planned. There's no way that that has been done. I you know I've said all this before, um, but it definitely, definitely has all been planned. 100%. That is definitely not a spare of the moment thing. Never. Thank you for the follow. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think I've touched base most of it already anyway. And, uh, Definitely a prison officer's helped. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. I definitely think there's a prison officer involved, the truck mate he's involved. You know, if he's got if he's got the kind of people that I think that he'd be in contact with, they would have serious money and yeah, he'll already be on his way out of there. And I'd be playing probably how long however long what Sam just said he was on Maman, so how long he was on Maman for, who knows? Probably quite a while. And someone could have applied for the position i know it's not a quick thing to get a job in a in a prison but you just don't know short staffed you don't know short staff got someone to go in get go and do the job bang it don't take long you apply for the job you do the training bang you're in the prison mm. these people got money these you know and some people these you know these kind of crimes people get uh, manipulated into doing stuff so you just don't know it could have been that's a really good point it could have been someone got a job in there like you said and helped all this on the inside oh uh, sabrina so said a year and a half he was um on the man for yeah so, so. definitely thank you david it's um, long enough. that is definitely long enough to yeah. get a job inside I wonder where he got the straps from. Yeah, you just don't know. They could have already been connected underneath the van, but tied tight. They probably wouldn't have even noticed them. They're more looking for a body or parcels and stuff like that strapped going in. They'll be looking for parcels underneath or even someone strapped going in. You know, they could have weapons and stuff. You just don't know. That's where they think. So that's why they do it in and out. Mm. Crazy. Oh, I am absolutely shattered. 
So I appreciate you taking the little five, 10 minutes to do this. I've already gone over it a bit. So I just, yeah, definitely wanted to hear your side, what the security was like, if it was the same thing as what it was in SEND um, yeah, in Bronzeville. Yeah, very mm -hmm. yeah. very strict with that. Definitely. That's what I mean. And, and even SEND was, and SEND was as well. So it wasn't an open prison at all, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't high security like Bronzefield and they were on it. Like I'd be, and if someone wasn't being paid, like there's no way that would happen there. Bye, Tours. Tours said bye, friend. Oh, bye. Oh, well, thank you, Ems, anyway. You're welcome. Always a pleasure. Okay.